and welcome to Mostly Minnesota Music Podcast Edition. I'm Ann Tracy. I'm here with my co-host, Heather Baker. Yeah, and we are here to speak with Mac Matthew French. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I'm excited, I'm, I'm excited to have you because it, it kind of makes me miss the Aster and a lot of other places oh, where yeah. I would see you seeing so much different music back in the before days. The before days. I, don't, I think that's going to be a term that we'll be using for, for a while. I even so. even I, once things get better. I was going to say, I just hope we can start using the after days. Yes. <laughs> then then I'll be okay with the before days. But it's, soon. Yeah, soon. Soon, soon. So, yes, welcome. I'm, I, again, excited to, to talk to you. And I'm. you're a singer-songwriter, but we haven't talked to you on camera before. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Do you have an interesting background? Yeah, I... Um... You know, as far as like the, the songwriting piece, I've been writing songs really more in earnest since about 2014. But I really kind of I have this musical history throughout my life. Um, started playing guitar when I was about 16. Um, but a lot of the music that I did was in church for for quite a long time. Um, and even you know even even up until the last couple of years have have done some music in church settings and things like that um but really started you know writing doing the singer songwriter thing around 2014 um uh, kind of going back to my uh church days i was actually a youth minister when i'm originally from ohio and i moved to minnesota in 2005 um, I was a youth minister at a church and, and did a lot of the music stuff there. So that's really what brought me to Minnesota and kind of, you know, sort of my musical upbringing. Um, I was laughing with my, my parents the other night um, after I released the new album. You know, the first people that I called were my parents to, you know, kind of just debrief and and talk to them a little bit and uh we were we were laughing but we always talk about when they bought me my first guitar when i was 16 and it was a christmas gift um but i had kind of gone through this cycle of different instruments i played the i played the trombone for a very short period of time i played the cornet and maybe the trumpet but none of those stuck so when i asked for a guitar they were like oh no here we go. We're going to spend money again. Mm -hmm. And, you know, nothing's going to happen out of this, but it's it stuck ever since. So that's a great story. We should relate to every parent because I, I've certainly said, oh, yeah, this is going to make the difference. I'll buy you this now. Then we're going to. Oh, yeah. Then you're going to go to law school. Then you're going to become a musician. Then you're going <laughs> <laughs> to end up with the, you never know. the jump rope. Yeah. <laughs> You never know what someone's going to latch on to. You never know. So that's that's good. Well, it's, well I'm just going to flash forward because I'm excited to talk about you have a, a new album that just came out last week on the 28th. Yes. Um, two Sides. Two Sides is the two sides is the full album. And, and I feel like um, I kind of, so I had the album Two Sides and I was like, well, maybe I should, you know, I'm a guy who likes puns and, you know, likes to kind of, you know, uh, play on words types thing type thing. So two sides. I thought, well, why don't I release it as side one and side two? And it's and it's always. I think everybody's. Um, you know, I, so I released side one, which is five songs on Friday, and I got a few email messages. I thought there was going to be a second side <laughs> already. So, so I'm I'm learning my lesson, but I'm having fun doing it. No, I think it's brilliant. I, you're building excitement already. Well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I because I have to say, I'm listening to it. I'm excited to hear what side one is because it's. Um, I I like this, but it seems like it's very much a song about love or an album about love and loss and kind of ch choosing what to do with with standing between that yes. crossroads of yeah. love and loss. Yes, I kind of you know as I was thinking about you know the themes of the album and you know if i had a if i had a phrase that sort of summed some things up it's an album for the in between is what i what i kind of think you know we've been in between a lot of things over the last couple of years here and and hopefully we're you know we're moving as we were talking about earlier to the after times here 
but um, you know, I think that that applies, you know, in in many different areas of life for sure. I think it's funny that it's Groundhog's Day today. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, you know, your song someday kind of feels like that stuck in between and trying to figure figure it out. Yeah, that, you know, that that song was probably, you know, some of the songs on the album were written a few years back and but that one is more recent. That one is during pandemic times. And it was really just this, you know, I feel like during the last couple of years, I, I'm more aware of how I feel when I wake up in the morning. Like some days I get energy and I'm ready to go and I'm ready to go tackle things. But then other days it's just like, I'd rather just pull the covers up and, and stay there. And um, that is really just a song about no matter how you're feeling, remember that you're loved and remember that tomorrow's a brand new day. So if today's not the one, tomorrow will be better. I have to say, um, I love the sound of the album, but even in particular when I've been listening to your side one of this album, it made me recognize myself during this time that not only am I'm taking the time to be attracted, like, oh, I like the sound of it. This is something that I would be drawn to, but I'm even more so that I've recognized drawn to the lyrics or how it makes me feel when I'm listening or uh, the imagery of what it, what it brings up personally for me and your this album really really got all of it so it was just interesting for me to figure that out i guess well i think if you if you see my heart go like this it's about to explode out of my chest because that's like that i think that's one of the 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 most um the things that any artist would want their music to do the most. And so I appreciate the, I appreciate you saying that and it, it will bring a smile to my face for any time I think of that. So thank you so much. Well, I get one too from listening to your music and the lyrics and what it drew out in me, but it, it was just interesting that with this every day of what the hell are we going to wake yeah. up to in our head, <laughs> you know, it's nice to listen to some of those um, songs and just to feel connected or give yourself a break. Like, it's okay. You're not the only one or not so hard yeah. on yourself. Yeah. I so. found that interesting in, in songwriting, you know, um, that particular song some days, I think I, I, I've done this a few times where I've written a song and it's essentially advice to myself. Like, you know, don't take your bad day too seriously kind of a thing in this particular case. And um, I find that when I write those advice songs to myself, those are often the ones that, you know, end up someone else needs to hear the same thing. And I think that's really, that's that's one of the things that I love most about songwriting is that you can say something that maybe you're feeling but someone else will, you know, they're, they're either feeling that same thing or they take the thing that you were feeling and maybe they're coming at it from a different experience or a different angle and they still get something out of it. I just love it so much. All right. I, I feel like the song Carry On, which uh, of, of course I have to hear in the time that we're in, but I feel like maybe it wasn't about the time that we're in it. You know, it's more universal than that. Yeah. That, uh, you know, really the uh, what started my songwriting journey back in 2014 is I, I went through a divorce and um, just kind of trying to figure out like what I wanted to do with with my extra time that I had on my hands. And, um, you know, songwriting became that thing for me that really like filled a space that needed filling. And I think Carry On originally was about that. Um, you know, kind of picking up the pieces of things that were broken and and moving on with it. And I've, 
you know, I think since the time that I wrote it, it, it at least released probably, you know, I released my full album, Sweet Love, back in 2018 and a few singles here and there. And that song kind of stayed on the shelf and I wasn't really sure if it would ever make it on an album. And I felt like it fit. And again, it's interesting and magical how music in a certain time that I, I wrote it about a different situation, but you put that same thing into now times and it takes on a whole different meaning. And I, I love the idea about kind of being at a place and then looking at the Bible and thinking, should you pick up that Bible or will, and, and then there's kind of a transition to, well, I, I've been there before. And yeah. I have to say, that's a line that I would say, I have heard in other country songs as well. If instead of Bible, you said bottle. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, you know, for me, that was, I don't know if that was the reason that I didn't record it, but I, I kind of thought, you know, particularly with my background as like a pastor and, and and I was like, oh, am I am I crossing the lines that maybe people that that would know me would be like, oh, he's lost his faith or or what have you. And and I wasn't, you know, it's not like I'm super concerned about what other people think. It, it just for me, I wasn't sure exactly how that how that would come out or come off to other people. And um, I think as I now that I've released it, there's people struggle with all kinds of different things. They struggle with belief or faith or, um, you know, we, we go, we go through things and, um, everyone has something that they need to carry on from. Well, and it's that kind of the, the, the definitive definition of insanity is doing the same thing over again, waiting for an outcome. And I kind of got that feel from it as much yes. as anything, it, no matter what it, it could be, it could be exercise. It could be, it could be something that normally, you know, but it's, it's recognizing you have to break out of that pattern. For sure. That's... And we, we, we kind of, when we were in the studio recording that, um, you know, it was one of those songs that like, you know, I don't, I don't know if I expect any of my songs to be hits or anything like that, but it's one where you feel a heart pull to put it on an album, but you don't really know, you know, if, is a radio station going to play it or whatever. Um, but when we got to the end of that, we, we partic we specifically left it in like, uh, you just pick yourself up and, and carry on. And it just kind of like fades out. It doesn't ever resolve. And, uh, I think, you know, as we go through things in life, sometimes it feels that way where it's, you know, it's not like we don't get past things because we do but sometimes they linger and sometimes you know we've we've gone through it and we've moved past it but we still think about it once in a while and that was really kind of the intent there there's to quote the other song some days yes <laughs> yes you nailed it there's such a nice tie-in together you know that's <laughs> I like how you just had said, stated before that things were written so far apart, but they fit so perfectly. So it's interesting, like you were saying, like, you know, you weren't sure how people would take it or whatever, but then it sort of makes the time right now that it fits so well. I'm glad the song is out now because it feels more universal that it can be heard rather than for Maybe sure back, years back yeah i you you never know i again you know i think there's all kinds of magic around music and that is that is one of them that one of the things that uh i was i'm reading this book by mary gaucher and she said that some t sometimes she figures out the meaning of her songs years later um and just thinking about as a writer um you know, you're writing your experience or you're writing a story that's, you know, maybe not your experience. Um, and, and sometimes you write a song and, and you think it's a good song and um, it means something to you. But then once you put it out, it means, you know, it can mean so many different things to so many different people. And I love that, love that, love that. When you, I have a, 
question. When people come talk to you about a song that inspired a certain whatever they connected, has that ever created a different song for you or sparked a different song? Yeah, I don't, I can't think of a specific instance, but for sure, um, you know, I, I think anytime, anytime something that you've written touches someone in a way where they want to come, come tell you what that song meant to them, I think that, um, you know, I think that's what all songwriters often are chasing. They want to like, you know, we want to make people feel something. Um, and you can't, you can't, you can't manufacture that kind of thing. You know, there's a way that you can go into a studio and, you know, put the pieces of a song together and you write a cool song, but you can't make someone feel something. And so anytime, I mean, I think that's one, one of the most inspiring things that challenges me to keep writing is when someone, you know, expresses that, you know, they felt something or they saw themselves in your, your song or, you know, it, it, or they, it reminded them of a, of a person in their life or something like that. It's just so cool. I like to say the song that reminds me of someone in my life is Man in Yellow Chair, Man in the Yellow mm -hmm. Chair. That is Thank a touching you. song. Thank you. Yeah, that that is, um, that is, I don't know, probably the, I, I, I've said before that it's probably the best song I've ever, ever written, and it might be the best one that I ever, that I ever write. Um, but I say that not because it's like, you know, the, you know, the coolest song, but it, you know, it, it was a song that was written in honor of my grandfather. And I, I think that I, I will hold on to that one forever as, um, as, as something that meant the most to me. It was a song that I, it was, so I, I do the, the singer songwriter challenge where we get a word prompt or some type of a prompt and we have either a week or two weeks to write a song based on that prompt. Uh, this song, this prompt was a picture of a gold chair, and it took me back to the the yellow table and chairs that were in my grandfather's kitchen. And uh, that was one that almost wrote itself. I mean, I didn't. Uh, I think I needed to say what that song says, and. Uh, so it kind of wrote itself. The the words and the, and the music came out fairly quickly, and uh, I I'm I'm just great. It doesn't always happen that way, but I'm grateful when it does. So. Oh, it's 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 touching. It's so funny because I ha I had forgotten, but yeah, my grandparents, my grandma, and grandpa Tracy had yellow chairs in their kitchen. Yeah. But it, they're just the that uh, there's a line about always got time for me and you. Yeah. And it's grandparents have time for you know the way and i'm saying this as a mother now the way you don't always have time for your kids yeah you know just sure. that let's let's do the blocks let's do the and i think it's it's um yeah such a nice such a nice testament to to the time that you spent together and and the meaning in that time the uh at the table and chairs i mean that that thing is probably from I, I mean, I, certainly long before I was born, and it's still the table and chair still lives in my parents' basement. Oh, nice. And it's oh. still, I mean, it still looks like it did the day that, the day that I first saw it. I mean, you know, stuff was built to last, apparently, um, and certainly, you know, it's so we. Um, there's a music video that I did for that song that you can find on YouTube. Uh, my friend David Dennison produced it. And, uh, you know, I uh, first we wanted to get the chair from my parents' house, but my parents are in Ohio, um, you know, and so we didn't want to risk like shipping something like that and oh, yeah. damaging it. So <laughs> I, you know, I, I scoured the internet for a yellow chair and I found a, a, a fairly convincing one on Amazon. So. And then David found a table that was kind of that old 70s, you know, situation. And um, so if if anybody wants to check out that video, it's on my YouTube. Nice. 
I was going to say, I like the images of your grandfather. Through, I mean, I like the whole video, but it, it's very touching. So even with, you know, how special the song is to you, I, the video lets us kind of in that. Yeah. Vision for you, yeah. We, I, I had this, I had in my mind that that song would mm -hmm. release on Father's Day. Um, or the weekend of a, of a Father's Day, and I th I wanted to do it two years ago, and it it just didn't didn't happen for whatever reason. Um, but we did release it on Father's Day or Father's Day weekend of twenty twenty one, um, and I think that you know that was like the the special moment where I could really put my grandfather in the spotlight. Um, he was he was a, a very um a very he was a he was a quiet man um but also a very strong man um but he 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 wouldn't be an attention seeker um so it was really neat to like all of these years later after he's passed on um to be able to be able to highlight him and tell his story and i think you know my hope is that there is a lot of him in me um that's so, what I was just going to ask you, having written it, do you, do you find more of yourself in, you know, find more of him in you where you go, oh, that's why I do that. You know? Yeah. You know, I, I think, um, I think, you know, I, I'm lucky to have uh, a wonderful family in my life, a wonderful dad and um, wonderful, wonderful mom. And um my grandfather was my my mom's dad, and they were they were best friends. Um, and just just thinking, any time I think of a quality that I would want to have, and what I strive for in the way that I treat people or the way that I connect with people, it's something that comes often comes from a grandfather. In the way that he he was the most patient man I've ever ever met in my life as well. And while I am I, I'm not on his level of patience, but I I do, <laughs> I do try. Um, but really, anytime you know, I, I'm striving to to become what what he was to me, and uh, uh, so that song will it will always serve as a reminder to me of of those qualities. That's that's great. What's so funny is that I, I see a song like "Still Got a Heart" is you presenting. Yeah. A similar goal to to yourself but to other people too yeah that i think that that was another one that was written during the during pandemic times um i want to say that was um you know around the when election time was hot back in 2020 and you know certainly just just kind of thinking thinking about how things had, from from a division standpoint had sort of come to this frenzy and i'm the guy that like i'm i'm i want to be a peacemaker and i i don't want i want people to get along um but i also understand that people have opinions as well um so i think that song really came out of that it was i'm not the guy that uh i don't like to get like you know preachy polit politic kind of thing that's that song is about the closest you'll probably ever, unless unless something changes for me, it's probably the closest you'll get to something like that. But it's really like, yes, we have disagreements, but I think there's really still good in the world. And um, I, I think we could both agree on the good things. So um, that's really, that's where that kind of where the, where the heart of that song came from. I think that there's such a warm kind of pragmatism about it. That, that a lot of times we're missing with the very divided sense. And it yeah. made that, it, it it made me like that song all the more. I was like, okay. Cause I can be a little more. <laughs> yeah. My day to day, not, not with people, but like politically kind of thing. And I thought, well, that, that is a, that is a, that is a, well, what I would always say, a kind of a, a call back to civilized living and, and, and just that be, be your better self, you know, just that, start with yourself start with start change with yourself i i, I like that song that's a thank you i, I had a a friend uh a friend was like you know you might get canceled for that song 
And I, and I said, well, God forbid anyone would think there's still good in the world. I think there's a, there's a, there's a level of optimism about it. And, and if, if optimism isn't popular anymore, I'm still going to be an optimist. And, uh, because I think, I think we, we need it. I need it. Um, you know, I think I, you know, I, I, I'm often the source of my own, uh, you know, if I'm not having a good day, I'm probably choosing the wrong things and the wrong attitudes on that day. And uh, so I think that there's a there's a level of optimism in that song that maybe was was like something that I needed to tell myself at, the, at that point in time. Like things are things are not looking good out there, but the, there's still hard out there in the world and it's still good. It's the yin and the yang, and I think we need both sides of it. For sure. You know, I, but, but I, but I, there's just such an authenticity to it that you just, you know, I, I feel like, I think, I feel like I, there are some people I could see sing that and I go, mm. <laughs> I mean, but it just comes through and it comes through in the writing and it comes through and that we're like, oh, this is, yeah. I mean, I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. So I said, I can be a little more. <laughs> <laughs> I but think I, I, like, I like how through even your songs and what I've seen and heard of you speaking that you are very open on looking at your own and self-discovery and yeah. very open on letting people know exactly where you are, how you feel for them. And, and that comes through in your music too. And that it just feels cozy and connected and calming thank you so much yeah. i think it was somebody asked on the live stream the other night the other night um where where does my vulnerability come from in my music and i was like i kind of was like what me i'm i'm vulnerable i didn't you know because i don't necessarily think of myself in that way um you know, I think I've as I've gotten older, I feel like I've gotten more, um, more willing to connect and more willing to share and more willing to open up. But I also think that in my in music for me, there's there's something that opens my heart up in a way that that I couldn't necessarily do. Like in a, I'd love to be able to do it in a conversation. I think you know, hopefully, I'm growing in that. But I think that writing for me helps take a vulnerability to another another level i'm able to say things in in ways that i might not be able to in a conversation um and so again you know that's something that i, I think the joy of that kind of writing definitely comes through on the album yeah it makes me think of people sitting in a quiet car turning on your radio and going <laughs> <laughs> Because a lot of us can't say the things or it just emotions frustrate us and can't spit it out the way it should and and not heard. And your songs are just like, oh my gosh, perfect for oh, that. So you. I just think you're helping so many people <laughs> Thank by you. hopefully yourself, as you said, through the writing. But it it just I just want I want to play a, your songs a bunch to people because <laughs> I can't say the words too, and I'm just like, here, this is it. <laughs> Thank you so much. I wish I could give you both a hug right now. I feel like it's like hug time at this at this point. That, <laughs> well, and saying that and mentioning you, we we've sort of mentioned how the the this side one was released last week, but tell us a little bit more about it because I thought it was, it was able to participate a little bit. It, it worked out so well. So, yeah, you know, um, you know, of course I've been planned for a release ahead of time. Um, I think I've, I've had it, you know, kind of set for that date for, you know, 60 or 90 days in advance. And, you know, I think the, uh, these days and particularly the last couple of months it's kind of like you know things were fine and then they weren't fine and i was you know uh, working on booking like a live show for the release day and um you know as the day 
as the day came sort of closer, it was like, well, you know, maybe we, maybe I should just do a live stream because, you know, nothing can de derail that, um, you know, from a, from a health standpoint or anything of that nature. Um, but I, you know, I wanted to be able to actually really connect with people. And I know that, uh, so, I, so I asked my friend Sarah Morris to host the live stream. Um, we do a lot of collaborations together, play music quite a bit together and write and things like that. Um, obviously a wonderful host. Um, and she's so, on the album, isn't she? She is on the album. Yep. She's in on, on side one, she sings on Still Got a Heart. And then side two, I think she has, you know, two or three more songs that she's on. Um, but so we did this live stream hosted by Sarah Morris. And that was it was really neat because, um, you know, it's tough to like do all the technical stuff and like be able to really connect to the comments or questions if you're just doing it by yourself. And so having having her host it, I, I really felt like we were able to connect with people and um, you know, answer some interesting, interesting, deep questions about the album and about me and and things like that. So we, you know, I, I think I, I would love to do it again. I'm, I'm excited to get back out and play live shows. But, uh, you know, for for this time, I'm, I'm really happy we were able to do that. It added a, a level of intimacy that you, you can't really have on, on a live stage. You know, yeah. where everybody gets to talk and and the quiet people ask the questions too. And sometimes those are the best questions. Yeah. And it was, you know, again, neat, you know, if I was doing a show in Minneapolis, you're limited to a certain audience and I have family, you know, around in different parts of the country. So to, to be able to share that with my mom and dad and my sister who are out of state, um, was, was a real blessing for me. That's good. Now the question I've been, the question I've really wanted to ask can you tell us anything about side two? Yeah. Um, I don't want to, I, in my mind, it's decidedly different, um, maybe thematically, but I think when people listen to it, they'll go, oh, it's not really that different. Um, I think there's more, uh, I think there's more, there's more songs about love on there. Um, and it's not like, uh, yeah, there's kind of, I feel like my music has grown, um, you know, over the course of my writing. And um, I feel like, so if this side was kind of talking about how we're, we're sort of in the in-between, I feel like side two is more, we're in the after times a little bit. Um, yeah, so I feel that way and I'm interested to, you know, I can't wait to, for, for it to get out there and to, for people to, to hear if people, everybody else hears that, but we'll see. I think that's so much fun. Yeah. It's like the penny novel, you know, or the, the would come out one paragraph yeah. at a time in the papers. I, I just think that's, that's a, a great way to do it. It's always hard figuring out like which, which songs go on an album, but then what order do they go on on the album? And I feel like, you know, um, I in planning for this one, somehow it, it worked out in the way that, that I, I'm like, oh, I guess I did okay at that. Um, you know, kind of, kind of keeping the two sides thematically together. Um, so again, it's not like, it's not drastically different, but it, I, I think it has more, um, more, more energetic, happiness to it and is it is is it done i mean it... it's it's um it is done as far as like the recording process so it will be you know kind of mixed and mastered okay. here over the next month or so and then i mean we don't have a we don't have an official date for it oh, but no, in my mind it's a it's like a late march or april sometime I'm just wondering if you're sitting like a five-year-old on Christmas Eve going, grrr. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm actually already, still uh, working. yeah, still working a little bit. Um, you know, that'll be in the hands of, uh, my friend, Chris, Christopher first, um, produced this Studio album. Season, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so a lot of that, and he's just a wizard and a genius and, 
Um, so a lot of that is in his court. I already have been putting a bug in his ear about the next album. So, you know, I mean, I think as an artist, it's not like, you know, certainly by by no means am I over this music. I'm actually more excited about it now than I have been. You go through this process of like, you know, as I talked about, some of these songs have been sort of sitting on the shelf for a while and, you know, you like them and then you hate them and then you like them and then you're like, oh, I'm going to put them on an album. So I better like them. And throughout the album process, it's like, you know, you do a piece of it and you're like, oh, man, I love what we did there. You're excited about it again. And then you sort of go through this, man, nah, that's all right. But now that it's out, I just, you know, now that it's out and hearing people react to it, you can't, you can't put a price tag on that. It's super cool. But um, always thinking forward to, to what's next as well. We can't for we are to also looking forward to what's next. I mean, I it, I do like that. Yeah, just to mess people up, you should call the next one side three, <laughs> <laughs> or B side or something. You know, just really yeah. throw them. <laughs> so I will have, um, I, you know, the the musical landscape of how you get things out there is is ever interesting, and there's a lot of conversation around that right now, of course. But um, side one and side two are released to will be released to all of the streaming services as kind of like separate sets of songs, um, five songs each. But then I will have actual physical CDs that it contains both both you know the whole album on one in one. So nice, nice, and it's all online. And I I'm just going to ask very quickly because you kind you kind of went through a a, a fairly quiet moniker change you went from yeah. french to matthew french in the last couple of years year yeah probably i think i think it must have been october of 2019 i released a song called changing um you know they're back again to my pun pun days yeah. um but i thought that would be a good time to 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 start going by my full name um m french was you know was awesome. I think it was just something where when I was recording one of my first, you know, my first EP, well, what are you going to call yourself? And somebody said, M French. And I said, yeah, sure. And and so I had, you know, kind of, kind of gone by that for, for a while. And, you know, when I would, when I would do gigs, people would introduce me and they didn't know whether to call me Matt or Matthew or, or M. Um, so, and I think too, you know, I talked about this a little bit in the live stream on Friday. Part of the going by my full name was just feeling like I was at a point in in my songwriting, just wanting to be myself, and not that it's some revolutionary thing to go from M to Matthew, um, but it just felt to me like, you know, if if you're gonna write your heart, just go by your name, and uh, so I did that. And there's, you know, there's all kinds of like. There's all kinds of things that come along with that of like making sure that your your website, you know, people can still get to your website and all of your social media. It was like this whole uh, process of getting all of the M French music to be under Matthew on Spotify and Apple Music and finally got that all sorted out now. So you can just search Matthew French and find anything I've done. Um, but I'm I'm it feels right so that's good good it does feel right and I, I i will include this in the notes but what is the the website address yeah it's m french music or matthew french music you can okay, get to so it either nice. way i i kind of kind of did a did a thing where it's an if, alias yep <laughs> yeah yeah so i you know i kept everything any anything on social media i'm at m french music um you know because i didn't it, I don't want right. to have a super long at Matthew French music. Right, as... right, right. No, it's, people can make that adjustment. So that's good. For sure. Matthew, thank you for joining us. It's fun to hear about the albums. I, I thought how you released it was so clever on all aspects from the the, the show with Sarah to the side, side one, side two. I love that. Thank you it's so just, much. I, I want to thank you. I want to thank you guys for... Um, you know, for, for the, for the very thoughtful questions here. And really, you know, I, I think we talked about it before, like going, not sticking to the surface 
um, you know, I think it's it's important that that you know I I want to be able to get better at like sharing my heart with people, and and I think you guys really pull that out of people, and and so I'm grateful for for times like this to be able to get to the those the questions that you might not be able to get to in a in a conversation or um, in other venues. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Thanks.